Hello, uh, this is my first real YouTube video. I uh, kind of wanted to document some of my uh, progresses in making a uh, uh, 3D printed magnetostatic speaker. Um, I got the inspiration, I guess, from making this after watching a couple of videos from some guy, I think, on the channel called PS Audio, uh, just about some audio amplifiers. Uh, in, in several of the videos, he kind of mentioned making uh, or magnetan speakers. Uh, so just after some curiosity, I had to look up what those speakers were. Uh, seemed kind of interesting. Uh, after researching some about magnetan and magnet, or coming across stuff about magnetostatic speakers, it seemed really interesting. It seemed like it was possible to maybe make one myself, uh, kind of a DIY project. Um, so I kind of started looking up a little bit more uh, information about those uh, and came across uh, another YouTube channel uh, from a guy, I believe his name is Joppy or something like that. Um, and the videos from him kind of showed, uh, you know, how they basically work and how he was making them. Uh, I like to say he used uh, more of uh, kind of off-the-shelf materials and kind of put them all together uh, where I'm using a 3D printer and designing uh, an actual frame for them. Uh, but yeah, it was a pretty, pretty interesting process. So uh, I'm going to start off kind of with, uh, I used a uh, online CAD program called Onshape. Uh, found it to be really uh, uh, helpful. Uh, very easy to use um, and one of my very first designs looked somewhat like this well it was this after printing it um, you can see there's little uh, channels down in there um, now initially these were going to be where the uh, 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 magnets would sit inside of uh, and they are sat down below a little bit there. So the mylar film was going to go on top of here. And the magnets would sit inside of there. And wires would be wrapped around each of these posts. They're on each side there. Um, I kind of went away from this design because I was a little fearful that the magnets I was going to get would be where, where I ended up getting a little bit too powerful and would not really stay in that in these uh, open channels like this um, so I ended up changing to a design that was more similar to this that actually had more like tunnels for the magnets to sit inside of um, these tunnels I knew would uh, really hold those magnets in place and I wouldn't have to worry about them, you know, coming out and trying to stick to one another. Um, I ended up using some really powerful magnets. I don't really know. I'm not experienced enough to know for sure. But I think the magnets I used were probably a little more overpowered than they needed to be. Uh, I bought literally the strongest magnets I could find. Um, I think they were like N52 or something. They were, these are really powerful magnets I have. Um, but anyway, um, so this is my first attempt using 3D printer and 3D design anything. Um, and I had some help from some people, some of my coworkers, uh, how to use a 3D printer. My, my work actually has a 3D printer for people to use just for these type of projects, really. Um, and something I kind of always wanted to do or is to use this thing. Um, so I ended up having some difficulties with doing my 3D prints. Um, the very first one here actually came out pretty good, but some of my later ones, I started having issues with, um, I don't know if you'd be able to tell at all, but they, they kind of warped a little bit and, and might be able to see it a little bit there. I don't know. And because the clearance is, is so so close here, there's uh, this here spot is only a millimeter higher than the tops of these uh, channels. And 
because it's so low there, any kind of warping really got it really close to the, to the mylar. Um, and it just wasn't, wouldn't really work like that. There's also one of these prototypes that I made a mistake on, and you could not possibly get the magnets inside of the channel. The uh, I was doing some quick changes in the OnShape CAD program file, and forgot to change the height of the channels. I changed the height of no wait, hold on. I changed the height of the channels, and not the the entrances for the channels. So the the channels were the same size the whole way through, but they were offset in different locations. So that didn't work. Um, uh, this was also, I don't, you probably can't really tell. Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, one other thing I was trying to do, I was hoping to get a better base response by putting a uh, somewhat thick film, a sheet of uh, mylar inside here and then attaching it to a thinner sheet of mylar. Um, and I, I didn't, this this model didn't really work very well. Uh, I think this was one of the ones that was warped. Um, and I never really got a chance to test out my theory there. But um, that actually leads me to another thing where finding mylar is not easy. Um, I made a mistake first, and I mean, I still want to try it like this, using this other stuff, but this mylar is way, way thicker than it should be. I think it was um, maybe five mils thick, and then I think the thicker stuff that I was using, I think is around 12 mils, and at the time, I didn't realize that there was a difference between mils and microns. Um, and that it, it was, that was way, 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 way too thick. I'm still kind of interested in maybe trying something with this, but we'll see. That, that can be put off till a little bit later. Um, but anyway, finding the right mylar is very difficult. Um, I actually came across some uh, people using it to make uh, model airplanes. Um, and they, I guess in this hobby, they uh, use mylar to coat the wings and the fuselage of their model planes. Um, so after that, I actually found a, a somewhat good supplier of, I think I have two micron and five micron uh, mylar now. Um, so yeah, took a little while to find, but I finally did find it. Um, Oh, I didn't bring it in here. But um, another thing was finding wire to use. Um, find Unless you want to buy like several tons of it at a time, finding uh, aluminum magnet wire is not very easy. Um, uh, basically, upon all of my searching, I actually found that anodized aluminum wire, the anodized coating is not conductive. Um, the, the, I guess the anodization process there is, will, uh, prevent, uh, any resistance or not prevent any resistance. That's terrible. Uh, is, is not, there's not, is non-conductive. Um, I was kind of skeptical of this and actually took a meter to the, to the wire and lo and behold, it was reading several mega ohms or something like a completely open circuit. So. Um, yeah, pretty surprising there, but anyway, um, after I finally got all the parts together, I made another print that, uh, for the 3D printer that actually did not warp and everything was right for, I have a working prototype. Um, it's not the prettiest, but, um, this actually does completely work. A um, couple of issues I had with it is winding the wire on here was not easy. Um, I think in the future, well, one thing I want to do is add um, 
is etch the aluminum and somehow glue the aluminum onto there and get away from using wires entirely. But anyway, um, I think this uh, these this solution actually might be better, um, just because you can wrap the wire around and back and forth and stuff. I think I might go back to this if I do another one with wire. Um, but another problem I had was while I was lacing it through these little holes, if you can see those, well, maybe over here might be the better place to show it. There's little holes there where the wires were going through. And then um, the, so the big issue I had was that while I was lacing it through, I uh, snapped the wire way shorter than I wanted to. Um, I don't know if it was a blessing in disguise in a sense, because I'm wondering maybe having a little bit more, like I had a hundred foot of wire total and I was planning on putting the entire thing there. Um, I don't think that was probably the best idea, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, the wire broke short. I measured the resistance and only had 0.6 ohms. Um, added some resistors. They're not on here right now, but uh, to to the to the path to bring it up to about 5 ohms, 5.5 ohms. Um, and hooked it up to my home theater speaker or systems, and everything worked. Um, so... You can see the magnets kind of inside of there. I don't know if you can really see them. They kind of just shine there. Um, I was trying to print little stoppers to hold the magnets in there. Um, didn't work the one time I tried it. Uh, it printed too big, so I just ended up using nails. It works. <laughs> it's not the best solution, but I was also just wanting to get it to work. And that's where I have it. Um, Took a lot of time. Was working on this about two months. Um, really, but I'm you know really excited. Glad it worked. Kind of want to keep uh, doing some more of these and maybe making it a little bit better. <coughs> but yeah.